All right, um, in this example. So guys, the first thing we want to do um, from here is go ahead and factor our numerator and denominator. Now, before we go and factor, remember, we want to simplify this, right? So could we actually just cancel out the x squareds? Why not? Sure, factor them out. But why? Then I'll like double the small on the one side. Well, guys, the division property only works. Like, if you had 4 plus 3 divided by, um, let's say, 5 plus 3, you can't just say that's equal to 4 fifths. Right? You can't just divide those out. Do you guys agree? However, if you have these terms separated by multiplication, then you can divide them out. Okay? So the important thing is to apply the division property. That means when the same number, term, or expression is divided by itself equals 1, you can only apply that when terms are separated by multiplication. So if they do one separate, so we divide them out. Yep, so that's why we factor it. So if I factor this, I get x minus 2 times x minus 1. And then here I get x plus 3 times x plus 1. And then again, it looks very, very tempting for us to want to divide these out because they're very simple. They're very close to each other, right? But just they're just off a little bit. But again, guys, unless it's the exact same number, term, or expression, we cannot divide them out. So this is it. This is just our simplified factored form. Nothing divided out. But then again, we're talking about their domain restrictions. So x cannot equal negative 3 and negative 1. Right? Because those are the values that make the denominator 0. We're not talking about holes, asymptotes, or domain. We just know that x cannot equal those values. Right? So it's just an unrestricted value. OK? That's it. Done.